Howdy folks, this is Evadable Boxy, aka Sakers the Billy Goat here, and today I want to just do a video on stealthing uh, Golden Grim Casino solo death wish, and this is a uh, post patch uh, where Overkill has added two more guards to the map. Um, this is really not that big of a deal, it's certainly not as much of a big a deal as everybody was making it out to be, um, at least on Reddit and wherever else I was reading. Um, so I just want to show, yeah, it's still possible. It's actually not a whole lot harder. Uh, you just have to use three painters instead of two, and uh, it's a little bit more tricky to get uh, the back established as an area that's safe. But uh, once you do, it's pretty much the same as it used to be. Um, so for favors here, um, with the inside help, I get uh, pretty much everything done here. Uh, except unlock doors, because that's pointless. But I get unlock cage doors. Um, I set my guitar position to here, and uh, I disable metal detectors because it's only one favor. And one time, uh, I did accidentally set off the metal detectors after telling Virus that uh, disabling the metal detectors was pointless. So uh, from now on, I pretty much kind of have to. Um, so basically, for this map, we have uh, three objectives. Uh, one of which is finding three pieces of the code. That can be done at any time in any order. The other two uh, can be done in any order, but need to be done uh, first in order to get to essentially the end game objective. Uh, and those two things are to find the blueprints uh, in the archives and to bring a USB stick from the server room to reception and back. Um, and we can actually do those two in any order. You can do the USB stick first, or you can do the archives first, whatever you want. And at the same time, you can get the code parts, whatever you want. So because of this, we're going to kind of plan this out uh, to reduce the amount of times we need to go back and forth here. Uh, that's kind of what this setup is designed to do. So at the start, uh, we we're going to start out front, and the first thing we're going to do is gather intel on... Uh, what uh, what the locations are for the bottle so that later on when we need to poison it in the end game uh, the final objective we'll know exactly where we have to go uh, because we don't want to be wandering around looking so there's three places uh, that we might need to go for that uh, the first one is the um, pool bar which is right here the second is the top of the VIP area here and the third is actually inside the VIP area. Now, inside the VIP area is also where one of the parts of the code will spawn because we're getting Heartbreaker in, it guarantees the spawn there. So it's kind of two birds with one stone. Um, we're also going to have uh, the sleeping gas will be wherever the guitar uh, case position is. And this kind of matters a little bit um, because you may not want to mask up immediately. You might decide that you want to uh, mask up in back so that you can use your casing mode to get back more easily, uh, but that kind of varies depending on the person, what they prefer to do. Um, the way that this map works is that you've essentially got uh, a big loop that goes through, because a large part of the map is just simply uh, not safe. So essentially, you'll be going here, you can cross here, and back around here, into the back areas here is all safe, and back around. That's essentially uh, our the areas that we can go to. We can't go anywhere in the middle, and we can't cross over uh, toward the front. We have to cross over toward the back. Uh, to get to the second floor, um, we have either the uh, front stairs here or the side stairs here and here. Uh, but we want to avoid going to the second floor as much as possible. We'll need to do that at least once, possibly twice, depending on where the uh, bottle is and how the exterior stairs spawn. Um, these stairs here and here have a chance to not spawn on Deathwish, and if they don't, it kind of sucks, but that means you have to use the interior stairs to get above the VIP area if you end up having to go there. So, uh, that pretty much describes what we have to do. I know it's a lot, uh, but I'll go over more once we actually get into the game. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it. I'd rather just show it, but this will just give you kind of an idea of the overall layout of the map and where you can go where you can't. So anyway, uh, let's go and start it up. So this took me uh, about three attempts tonight to get this down. Um, I pretty much know what I'm doing, but uh, unfortunately on this map, sometimes the texture is a little iffy and sometimes you get bad luck. Uh, I made it fairly far all of the times that I tried it, uh, but this run, uh, everything kind of worked out for me. So um, first thing that we're doing is just kind of scouting out, looking for the bottles, finding out what they are. So we see that there's a pink bottle over on the VIP side. 
And then we're going to check the bottle over on the pool side. And that's a red. So we've got a red bottle on uh, pool side, pink bottle on VIP side. So now we have to figure out where those bottles are so that later on uh, we know where we have to go. So we see the reds there. So if it's so uh, pool side pool, that means that if the uh, civilian that we need to poison spawns on the pool side, we need to go to the pool to get the uh, ring for him. So now we need to uh, uh, find the uh, pink bottle. So that's what's either going to be in the VIP area or it's going to be uh, above the VIP in the terrace outside. So we see that that's green. That means it has to be on the terrace, but I go up there to find it either way because I know that I'm going to be uh, showing this off and I want you guys to see where it is. You can see here, both the blue and the pink are there. So we make a note of that. So um, I don't know which uh, one of those two bottles that I'll need, but I know it's going to be one of those two. So I've got both of them noted there. The nice thing about this is that uh, both the bottles are on the same side as the civilian that need, will need to be poisoned, so I won't need to cross over. So now I'm just going to uh, get my gear. Uh, I do that in civilian mode because in civilian mode you are completely immune to being detected. You can walk right through guards and they will not see you. And here I decide to max uh, mask up immediately rather than coming back for the sleeping gas, and it actually turns out to be... Uh, a bit of a mistake here, as you will see in a moment. Uh, one of the big things about Payday Stealth is patience, and we're about to learn an important lesson in patience. So while I'm here, uh, one of the advantages of Mask Up is I can get that body bag uh, right away. So I see, oh look at this, there's a guard walking exactly where I need to go. I need to get back uh, in that VIP area where that guard is, but I can't go there because there's a guard there. So I have to wait. Now, I've done this heist quite a few times, especially when I was learning it, and uh, I think it's because of the new guards being added, but you can see here that I try to go and then there's a guard there, so I decide to play it safe, he starts walking away, I think, great, I'll go, and guard right there. So I'm thinking, alright, well I need to wait for this guy, but I can't wait for him over there because that area is too open, so I have to retreat back to the bathroom and wait. Now what I didn't realize at this point is that that guard is actually bugged and will not move. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So I figure, okay, he's gotta be gone by now, and then I see him and I think, okay, I'm actually thinking at this point that this is the same guard. But it's actually not. Uh, it's actually a different guard that spawned and walked out. So I figure, okay. Now we're clear. And this is something that uh, I've done this so many times, and this is the only time that I've been sitting here four minutes into the heist and still haven't made it to the employee-only place. So that guard goes there, uh, deciding to troll me. About nine times out of ten you can get behind that guard and make it, but uh, I decide not to, and it turns out it was pretty smart because he turned around. I'm hoping he'll go up the stairs, but no, he goes back to the area that I need to go. So now we're waiting again. And this is where I see, I realize, hey, that's a different guard. And that's when I start to think, hey, that guard hasn't moved in over two minutes. He's probably bugged. So unfortunately, uh, this means that I have to kind of do a risky maneuver here, because he's stationary under a camera. Uh, that means there's no way to kill him without ECMing. And I do need to kill him. Um, I can't have him blocking that entire area, the whole heist. Uh, so I do a pretty risky move here. Once I get a chance, we're now up to five minutes and I haven't made it to the VIP area yet. Uh, Elvis is out front there. Uh, Elvis is oddly extremely uh, observant for a civilian. He doesn't quite seem to have guard sight range, but it's more than a normal civilian, or maybe I'm just crazy. So then that guard decides he's going to stand there again, and we get trolled, and now we have to wait again.
and finally I decide screw it I can't wait any longer we're gonna just go for it Now, I don't have pager blocker on this uh, build specifically so that I can do this. If you have pager blocker, this becomes a lot more tricky. You can still do it, but you need to time your ECM wearing off with uh, looping the camera so that you can answer the pager during a camera loop and then get rid of the body. So it's not impossible, but it's just a lot harder. Uh, pager blocker is typically not that good for general use stealthing. It's really more for ECM rushing. So I, I don't get it on uh, my normal stealth build. So I kind of want to dump this body, but there's no storage on that side. So now that I've finally done that, uh, I decide to go for the server room. I usually like to try to do the USB stick first. Uh, that's mainly because it's it tends to be the hardest part of the heist. So I like to get it over with. Um, just because it reduces uh, the time if I do get caught. Although actually, I don't think any of my attempts tonight, uh, or the two previous attempts, I mean, uh, neither one of them ended here. In both cases, uh, I failed uh, much later. So this civilian here is playing the slots. is a bit of a problem, but if you sprint and jump past him, you're usually okay. Uh, because the slots themselves actually block his view, so he's only got a very narrow peripheral view. So here I'm going to uh, grab the code from the VIP room. I don't even look at what the number is, it doesn't even matter. Uh, Bane will tell you what the code is later, so there's no reason to even look at it. Just go in there, pop it, and leave. As long as you've opened the briefcase accounts. And then here I will get uh, the list. So we're about halfway done on that, which is the hardest part, really. And I loop that camera because I like to be able to pause in this doorway. And uh, if you're in this doorway here, and you can see here that I actually see Elvis is there, so I just decide to wait. Uh, if you're in that doorway, the camera will see you, so you can't stay there too long. So I like looping it because that lets me sit there, uh, which is a good spot to look out from without worrying about the camera. So we up by that NPC again. And I decide to go outside here through the bathroom. Because of that guard there. So he's moved on. Keep track, guys. Stay back. And now we need to get back to the uh, server room. We just want to make sure it's clear, and there we go. USB stick is done. So now uh, I need to do the code from the locker room, and I need to do the archives. So the archives are right here, so I decided to get that done. The archives aren't too bad. Um, the cameras really shouldn't catch you because they're stationary, so the biggest threat is the civilian. Uh, here, if you are the host and you anger yourself just right, this uh, clean cart will block the camera, and you can get that uh, shelf there. So the main thing that you kind of want to do is just know where the NPC is. She moves fairly quickly, and then just explore the areas that she's not at. It's really that simple. Um, if you're not solo and you've got plenty of ECMs, because you're like a four-man, you're not going to need eight ECMs, you can just ECM, kill her, back her body uh, away from the cam, so then you've pretty much got free reign of the place. Um, if you want to be a little bit more risky, you can just shoot her in an area that's a camera blind spot. Uh, it's really up to you how you want to handle it. I decide to just kind of uh, avoid her because it's not too big of a deal. She's not that difficult to deal with. So I just wanted to see where she is. I saw her very briefly peeking near that uh, pillar there. So there I see her again, so I know where she is. Um, as long as she doesn't sneak up on you, you should be fine. We're good. That's them. 
There we go. Uh, get the blueprints. So now I need to uh, poison the drink, and I also need to do the. Uh, and I also need to do the uh, locker room. So it's always important to note what uh, room number you get. Uh, if it's a room number that's uh, 150 or above, then that's actually at the uh, front end of the casino. If it's under 150, it's at the rear end. So uh, I'll need to cross back to the front of the casino uh, in order to get that. But that's not a not too much of a problem. So here, since that guard's blocking me, I decide uh, I might as well get this done now. This isn't too bad. Um, you just have to be careful because when the guard is standing in the doorway, he'll see you in the locker room if you're doing the uh, lockers. So I like to get these done first because these are the safest to do. And uh, thankfully here, I get lucky. Keep track, guys. Find a guest. Remember, he's a slot machine addict. So I just wait for him to stare at a wall, and there you go. So I'll get two uh, of the three. The third uh, code is very easy to get. It's in the manager's office. It's not guarded. Um, so I've basically got the code. So uh, now really it's just poisoning the guest. And here I see this guard decided to go into a camera blind spot, so I take him out. Um, taking out these guards really helps, but the main issue is that there's so many cameras in that area. They really need to wait until they're at a good blind spot, and uh, in this case, this guy was, so. Now I'm, I've got two guards down. I really need uh, just one more, and then I've got this area safe. Now I'm checking to see which side he's on. Yeah, I see he is on this side. So um, I know that uh, if it was VIP side, that it was on the terrace. So I check real quick here. So the VIP side is terrace, so now I know where I need to go. Um, and I've got a few options to get there. I could use the stairs that are uh, right next to it. I could use the stairs that are in the rear here, outside the bathroom. Or I could go through the casino. Um, of those three, I think using these back stairs is the safest. So what I'm doing here is uh, just hiding in there to proc um, six cents, so I know when that guard leaves. We're good. And I'm just going to shadow this guard until uh, I can get past him. So thankfully he goes into the casino, so I can take this uh, outside part. Getting back down is uh, significantly easier. You just have to make sure that you're not jumping down in front of a guard. That's why I kind of look around first. spiked it. Now, if uh, if you're lucky, he will walk into the bathroom. Uh, if you are unlucky, he will go outside. Uh, I, of course, am unlucky, so he goes outside. Um, this isn't too bad, though. The worst is if he goes into uh, the pool side and decides to walk outside around the pool because there's a lot of guards and it's very difficult to kill him and bag him before you get spotted. So if he spawns on the pool side, you need to be in the bathroom ready for him, and you need to kill him as soon as he goes into the bathroom, because if you don't, he'll walk outside. Uh, for this, it's pretty much impossible, because he walks straight outside. 
but for the pool, he will walk through the bathroom to go outside, and then you can kill him there. So I want to make sure that there's no guard there or other civilians, so that's why I'm standing here. I was waiting to proc six cents, but I don't see anybody else. So this is where, again, patience becomes important. Uh, that guard is facing there, looking at him. I don't know which direction he's going to go, but as long as he's there, I cannot kill him safely. And unfortunately for me, he decides to go hang out with the civilian. So I'm going into the stall and standing here, again, to proc six cents so that I can see the guard when he moves. He is leaving, but unfortunately, uh, I see another civilian. Kind of lucky that I spotted her. So now I know it's clear for guards, but I don't know if that other civvy is there. So I decided to give it a little bit of time. Uh, she'll probably just walk up the stairs and head back into the casino. And uh, since I'm watching here, there shouldn't be any other guards coming. So I'm really hoping that this guard walks away, which he ends up doing. This gives me the window that I need Watch to pop crowd, him and get the keycard. we refill our body bags and now I have to get to the uh, front of the casino uh, because that's where the uh, 51 rooms are all the 150 rooms are I mean but there was a guard right out there so I gotta gotta wait for him to leave just more being patient Uh, in general, I found it's much, much easier to cross over to the front uh, down below than it is to go upstairs uh, through these near stairs and then try to cross to the front of the casino upstairs. Uh, the civilian spawns upstairs are just a lot more unpredictable, and there's uh, less rooms that you could duck into on the side. So my advice is to, uh, if you get the front uh, rooms like I did here, uh, it's best to just uh, wait for it to be clear and then take the same route, essentially, that you took to the uh, reception area. So here I nearly get caught by that camera, but uh, I moved quickly enough. And I see, unfortunately, Elvis is on the stairs coming toward me. Um, I actually saw him coming up the stairs, and then he decided to just get to the top of the stairs and come back down. Because uh, uh, the NPCs and the guards were really trolling me on this run. And here I got into a little bit of trouble, but managed to dodge out of it. I think the reception receptionist was seeing me. Um, but here, finally, I make it up. Now I just need to find 151, which isn't too difficult. Here we go. Now at this point it becomes a lot more easy because uh, all of the cameras are now out. Just being cautious, I really don't want to mess it up at this point. And I decide it's actually... Uh, it's going to be a little safer if I go back down using the same method. Uh, I also could have taken the ex, uh, the outside stairs to get up there, but I uh, figured that would be a little easier. In retrospect, um, I think it would have been safer to do that. And we're getting uh, trolled by a guard in our way again.
And I know that there's still one more guard that is around back here. But uh, I decided to grab this uh, last part of the code first. This is uh, fairly simple. This is why I kind of saved this for last, because it's so easy. It's just... Uh, it's actually a 30-second pick, which is uh, interesting, because every other pick in the game is 45 seconds. But that's actually because uh, this vault only takes 41 seconds to drill with an improved drill. So uh, if it they didn't reduce it from the 45, it would actually take longer to pick than it would to drill. So I guess that's why they figured uh, if you took safe craft, you deserve to have uh, 15 seconds of your life given back. I'm still looking for that last guard, but I don't see him, so I figure I'll start uh, the lasers now. Because okay. uh, this part is just a one minute wait in no way to skip it. At this point, I'm mostly home free. I just uh, need to tie up the loose end of the one guard, and here he is. Unfortunately for him, uh, the cameras are down, so I can kill him wherever the hell I want. And uh, pager him, and then it's pretty much smooth sailing from here. I decide that I want to uh, ditch his body just in case. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure that there isn't a fourth guard that patrols. I didn't see one my entire time, and I moved all 30 bags solo, which took me about another 15 minutes, uh, and he never came back here. But uh, I figure, hey, I've got the body bag. Why not? Um, and I also decide to open up the delivery room and uh, get the painting in while I'm waiting, and there we go. Uh, lasers are deactivated. And now Bane will tell me the code, because I didn't bother right. looking. The numbers for the codes are... Eight. Eight. Four. And there we go, we're in. Now I always drill this first, uh, since I don't have silent drills. I've never had a guard come and... Uh, screw me over because of the drill there, but I have had it happen uh, for the uh, drills on these ones, so that's why I get the keys for these. Um, that's also why I bagged that guy up there, just in case a guard does get lured. This is about done, so uh, I decided I want to get the dentist loot taken care of uh, right away. So for these lasers, um, I found that lasers, not just this one, but the big bank lasers and the um, lasers on GoBank all follow a pattern in that uh, there's a set number of uh, instances uh, of the lasers, and there's always two of them that are safe. So what I like to do is figure out the pattern and then always go on the second safe one because the safe is always unique, uh, and that way I'll always know that I'm looking at the right pattern. Uh, other thing about those is that moving lasers, you can throw loot right through them and it's fine. Uh, loot, the alarm will never go off by throwing a loot bag. So here I've got it memorized, I, can, I know that that's safe, and then I know that I've got that, then I've got the one up there, then the safe, then two, there you go. And that's the second safe. So that way I know since uh, the safes are unique, uh, that I'm not actually uh, losing my location on the pattern there. Uh, I don't know if I explained that well, but basically because there's two safe spots on the pattern, if you always go at the second one, you won't get confused because the safe parts are always unique. Because uh, you want to know when the safe is coming beforehand. Alright, 
and that's that. Um, at this point, I could just step out into the uh, escape and leave, uh, but that's not my style. Uh, I want to loot the place blind, so. Uh, but I'm not going to sit around and leave the video on while I move 30 bags. Uh, this actually finishes up uh, around the 40 minute mark. So uh, I will just say uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to cut to the end of the heist and uh, show you guys the end screen loot and everything. Uh, if you have any questions or any thoughts, uh, please leave them in the uh, comments below. Thank you very much for watching and happy heisting.